Here's some help with the chapter 10-2 problem set, uh, question number seven. So we'll take a look at question number seven here. So here's an example of what your question seven might look like. So we've been, we're talking about this ethylene diamine species. And so amines are our good weak bases typically. And so we've been given the PKB values, PKB1 and PKB2, for this weak diprotic base. So as a, bro, as a base, a diprotic base, it can take up to two protons. And so again, we're gonna have the fully protonated species. So that's this one right here, fully protonated. And so I'm gonna abbreviate that one, BH2+. And so this guy acts like a weak diprotic acid. This would be the intermediate form then that int and it'll have the formula we'll call it bh plus and then right here we have the fully deprotonated form and so we'll just call that b all right so we've got those three forms here so i think it's a little bit easier to think of this problem from the acid point of view so thinking of this as a weak diprotid diprotic acid that's fully protonated, and this is the fully deprotonated form of that weak acid. And so in that case, we're gonna need pKa's for these guys. And so we can do that using uh, this equation. So anytime you have a conjugate acid-base pair, there's a connection between Kw and the Ka for the acid and the Kb for the conjugate base. Now, if we were to take the negative logarithm of both sides of this equation, we could re rewrite this as pKw equals pKa plus pKb. So those equations are really the same. They're just different mathematical ways of writing the same thing. So we know that at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So the negative log of that is 14. So if we wanted to find out our pKa's for these acid species, from our pKb's, we could just solve this equation. So we would get uh, pKa1 would be equal to 14 minus uh, pKa B. And the question is, which B do we use? Well, we're gonna use the pKb that relates the two um, equilibrium substances, the two equilibrium species that are associated with the Ka1 reaction. So Ka1, would involve this acid dissociating to give you this conjugate base. And so we see that that is gonna be involved in the Kb2, this base taking one proton to give us this guy. So we're gonna want the Kb2 here, so Kb2. And so pKa1 is then gonna be 14 minus the pKb2, which is 7.152 and that's gonna give us 6.848 for our pKa1. We can do the same kind of thing to figure out pKa2. It's gonna be 14 minus the pKb1. So that's 14 minus the pKb1 is 4.072. And so that's gonna give us 9.928. Okay, so now what we do is we make our ladder diagram. And so this is like a, a diprotic acid. So there are two pKa's. So there's one, the um, smaller value at 6.85 and the larger value at 9.93 from these two numbers up here. And so this is our pH axis and it's increasing going this way. And so in this region right here, our predominant form is gonna be the fully protonated form. So that's gonna be uh, the BH2 plus. Here we've got our intermediate form, BH plus. And here we've got the fully deprotonated form, B. Okay, so now what we need to do is look at each of these pH values and figure out, well, what is the predominant form? So at a pH of 6.096, we will figure out where we think that pH occurs and um, we will figure out which form is underneath it. 
And then let's say that we found that that was here. Um, I'm going to let you determine that. So pay no attention to these funny lines that I'm drawing. They may not be correct. So let's say that we decide that that pH value occurs here on this scale. And so that means that um, the predominant species would be BH plus, but we're also closer to B than we are to BH2. So our second most abundant species in this example would be B. So our most abundant species would be BH plus if I think that that pH occurs here. And my uh, second most abundant species would be B because I'm closer, let's say, to the 9.93 pH than I am to the 6.85 pH. So that's how you'll determine the most abundant and the second most abundant forms. Now down here, we're asked to calculate the percentage of ethylene diamine in the predominant form at each pH, okay? So let's say here at this pH, we figured out that the predominant form was BH plus, okay? So I may or may not be right. Don't trust this. It might be one of these other ones. So do your own reasoning to see if that's correct. So what we really want to do here is calculate the alpha fraction for this BH plus species. So that would be the intermediate form of a diprotic acid. Now, since we were asked for percentage, at the end, what we're going to have to do is multiply that alpha fraction by 100. And so you're going to go want to look at those complicated alpha fraction equations that we talked about in class. And so for the intermediate species of a diprotic acid, it would be this. It would be the Ka1 times the H plus ion concentration divided by the H plus ion concentration squared plus the Ka1 times the H plus concentration raised to the first power plus the Ka1 times the Ka2 equilibrium constants. Okay, so in order to do this, you would take the pH that you know, and you would first calculate what the H plus ion concentration is. So the H plus ion concentration is gonna be 10 raised to the negative pH power. And so let's say in this first question, that's gonna be 10 raised to the negative uh, 6.096. And so you'll get a number for that. And that's what you're gonna stick in for each of these H pluses in your equation. You will also need to calculate your Ka1s and Ka2s, and we get that by taking 10 and raising it to the negative pKa, let's say, 2 power, all right? And so up here, we saw what our pKa1s and pKa2s were. So pKa2 is 9.928, and so we would say, okay, the Ka2 is gonna be 10 raised to the negative, 9.928. 9 to 8 power. And then once you know that, that's what's going to go in for your different k's in this expression. Okay, so you'll have different alpha expression equations depending on which is the predominant form. So are you using the fully protonated form? So that would be like your alpha equation for H2A, the intermediate form for HA minus, or the fully deprotonated form for like A2 minus. And again, after you calculate the alpha fraction, you will need to multiply by 100 to convert that into a percentage. So that's how you'll get the answer for both of these two blanks here at the bottom. As usual, if you have any questions about how to get these numbers, please feel free to come and talk to me. Send me an email.